A fundamental problem in discrete differential geometry is to define the exponential map in a discrete manifold. So we need a notion of geodesic flow and we need a notion of sectional curvature. So the problems are already evident if you look at the simplest examples like the icosahedron. If you look here, we can, for example, take a path and then try to continue it. But we have already a problem here to define a natural continuation uh, if we have a vertex degree, an odd vertex degree. So I tried to look at this a couple of years ago by just looking only at Eulerian graphs in two dimensions or to have in higher dimensions a notion of uh, a unit sphere. We have unit spheres which are covers of projective spaces. And in this case, then we can continue from a point to the opposite point and go so through the unit ball and continue like that the flow. Another approach which I try just in order to get the notion of sectional curvature is the most, you know, naive approach is to just assume that every wheel graph in has five or less boundary points, which means positive curvature. Every wheel graph has positive curvature. So I tried that. That's a, I call this the Mickey Mouse theorem and I proved in arbitrary dimension that if you have such a, a graph, then it has to be a sphere. So it's not interesting. It doesn't produce even projective spaces. There's not enough space for producing a projective space, even in two dimensions. Another uh, thing you can try is just to forget about the classical paths and look at the waves. That's very natural because distances are measured with electromagnetic waves and just look what nature does and we go to the quantum and we look at the wave equation or the Schrodinger equation, which is equivalent, right? Because you can, if you have a, the Laplacian is a square of a Dirac operator and the, the Schrodinger equation for the Dirac operator is nothing else than the wave equation. And so you, you have a, also you can then take maybe the initial velocity of the wave in such a way that you kind of only evolve in a two-dimensional plane and get so a notion of sectional curvature. This is all not so clear, you know, what happens, what, what theorems you can prove with that. Another thing I've tried is uh, the carton, you know, there is a kind of a generalized Laplacian Lx if you have an inner derivative ix and then you take instead of d d star plus d star d, which is the Laplacian and goes into all directions, you just have a dx, which is going backwards like d star from a k form to a k minus one form. And then you can, with this Carton formula, you can define something like a, a Lie derivative or and hope that you can then just like this get a notion of geodesic flow. I tried that, but also here it would be hard to prove results. So uh, over the break, I was trying again to look at this uh, conundrum and looked at the uh, very, very simple approach, which is just look at the manifold, a uh, Q manifold. And then if you have a Q minus two dimensional simplex, these are called bones in the general relativity framework, then we can look at the dual, which is the intersection of all unit spheres. Uh, for all vertices in this. And this gives us a circle. And so if you have a circle in a Q manifold, then we have also kind of a, a notion of a two dimensional plane. And then we can try to extend this by just also then afterwards reflecting at the unit sphere and then the the the, the X is, 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 is further away and we can continue like this. And we get so a kind of a two dimensional sheet and uh, this two-dimensional sheet, then I mean, if you do it twice, we can try to use something like the Puiseux formula, which I have experimented with uh, 14 years ago. Right? That's kind of the starting point. I started with this kind of notion of 
curvature for graphs and uh, I looked at that in very very special cases like the hexagon of lattice and uh, so so uh, uh, so there is a there's a hope from Blaufsatz with this uh, curvature so I'm only interested in notions where we can really prove something they have to be simple not numerical or engineering approaches and uh, what is nice about this uh, approach this actually works also for defining a geodesic flow even so it is kind of a very you know limited because what you have is then just in dimension q you have just q plus one di directions where you can where you can uh, evolve so that's of course not what we want for a geodesic flow but if you want to evolve in a two-dimensional plane we can do that by just choosing then uh, q minus two simplex if you want to evolve a three-dimensional space in a four-dimensional space for example we would take a q minus three simplex and so we can kind of uh, define here notions of geodesic evolutions on sub manifolds in the direction of sub manifolds still it's quite rigid because in the in the two-dimensional case already if we if we if you look at the geodesic flow then we have just this flow on triangles which is not very interesting so it doesn't for example satisfy hope free enough we can cannot connect to arbitrary points with a geodesic like that so the challenge remains and uh, but I will probably look at this numerically in the next uh, couple of weeks and see whether there is something interesting coming, popping up. That's it for today.